In our discussion of oscillations and oscillating circuits, uh, this was where energy was already in the system in some way, or we were adding it to overcome the resistance, and it was producing oscillations based on the uh, capacitance and inductance. Resonance is a different mechanism. Resonance is the uh, interaction of the uh, inductor and capacitor to an applied potential uh, with a with a certain frequency, and it's that response that allows us to uh, do certain uh, functions. And these functions are mainly called filters. Filters either pass or reject <clears throat> reject can't spell I apologize certain frequencies or frequency bands. And these are the basis of equalizers. If you've seen stereo equipment that has the uh, component that you look at it, it has a number of sliding controls and they'll have frequency information of what frequencies it's controlling you'll have a number of slides the more bands the better uh, the better selection that you have so these are all controls sometimes you may have a little display in the center showing a spectrum analyzer which is levels per frequency so these circuits are the basis for filtering and equalizers. If I take a look at a circuit and I want to know its current and I just want to know the magnitude, well that's just going to be equal to the magnitude of the voltage potential in the circuit divided by magnitude of the impedance. And we can write this as VRMS over R squared plus omega L minus 1 over omega C squared. And then we have to take the square root of that. And that's the magnitude of our impedance. And for resonance, we want this expression to go to zero. Because we want just resistance as our result. So if we set this equal to zero, equal to zero, then I can move the capacitive reactants across. Bring omega from the capacitive reactants up and L down. And that gives me omega squared is equal to 1 over LC and that just means that omega is equal to 1 over square root LC. Do not get this mixed up with oscillations. The frequency or the the omega equation is the same but is two distinctly separate mechanisms. One has the energy already in it. The other is 
the oscillator has the energy in it. The other is a selection based on the frequency that's being supplied to the circuit. Now let's take a look at how this works. Here we have reactance per frequency and you notice that the blue line is my capacitive reactance, my red line is my inductive reactance. At low frequencies, this is log normal scale in the horizontal and linear scale in the vertical. So you notice that at lower frequencies my inductive reactance is pretty low. It's just a wire. Frequency is not changing that quickly. Whereas my capacitance is very high. It charges up quickly. Uh, the, the reactance is high because there's not a lot of changes going in the, cap in the capacitor. But as you increase the frequency your inductive reactance begins to increase and your capacitive reactance begins to decrease until you get to this point where they cross and this is resonance. And then after this point you see that the inductive reactance is going high and the capacitive reactance is going low at higher frequencies. Now this can be seen from our formulas for inductive and capacitive reactances. Notice that as the frequency gets larger, if the inductance stays the same, this value L is the same, constant, the frequency goes up, my reactance goes up, and for capacitive, if C is constant, my capacitant, capacitance, as my frequency gets larger, my capacitive reactance gets smaller. So let's look at how we can use these in circuits. One of these circuits has the capacitor and inductor in parallel. And you notice that if I take the potential across the capacitor and inductor, one of them is going to be at a lower frequency. Uh, that would be the inductor would be almost like a short at a lower frequency and it's going to have the most effect at the lower frequencies and as the frequency starts to increase of this source we're saying that this potential, the frequency is changing so as that frequency increases, the capacitive uh, reactance is lowering, the inductive reactance is getting increasing, and I get this point where, uh, this peak where both the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance are equal, and then the capacitor starts to have a lower uh, frequency, or a lower reactance. So this is the inductor taking over, giving low, low uh, reactance path, and this is the capacitor giving the low reactive path. Now we can flip this from parallel to serial and notice that the magnitude of the potential across these two are fairly high and then there's a point at which it drops to very close to zero and then back up. So in this case because it's in the low end the inductor is not having much of an effect but the capacitor is so because it's in series the capacitor is having a bigger effect and after the resonance at this point, at the bottom, then the inductor is going to have 
the higher reactants. So these circuits become frequency selective. That's what makes them very useful for doing all sorts of filtering, noise reduction. Uh, there's so many applications for these. Uh, there are classes that you could spend semesters just going over all the different uh, combinations and uh, how you can get uh, different resonance frequencies, how you can get uh, these graphs to change, be more uh, shaped, like if I wanted to be m much more selective, I could have this band in here much smaller by changing these values, adding more capacitors and inductors. There's a lot of things that can be done. So the, this is resonance. It's uh, a very interesting topic, and uh, if you're ever going to take electrical engineering, this will be something that I always enjoyed. I thought it was a lot of fun.